Since I have used and loved two of the more common homeschool phonics and reading programs, I thought it would be kind of fun to hop on here and give you guys a bit of a comparison, a bit of like, what did I think of each of these programs? So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I'm a mom to four. I love to homeschool. I love to read good books and I love to share both of those things on this channel. So if you also like those things, please consider subscribing. So as most of you know, there are a number of homeschool programs that you can use to teach your child to read. When I was in the process of researching and trying to figure out what would work for me, the kinds of things I was looking for was that it had a strong phonics foundation as well as that it was somewhat interactive. I have a son and he's a little bit of a wiggle worm, so I wanted something that was active. And so that really led me to these two, The Logic of English, as well as All About Reading. So these are the two I'm gonna talk about today. So my plan for this video is that I'm first gonna take you through both programs. I'm, I think I'm gonna make another kind of chart thing. I did this in the math curriculum video I made where I compare things like cost, style, what's included, kind of what subjects are involved in each of these programs. So I'll do that first, and then I want to show you the resources you will need to implement both of these programs. And I'm gonna use level one for all about reading and foundations A and B for logic of English because they're good beginner programs. So you're talking kindergarten and first grade. And then to wrap it all up, I wanna share a bit about our journey, our experience with both these programs, what we liked, what we didn't like. So please make sure to stick around to the end to get a bit of a walkthrough of my process while I was making these decisions. So I included this chart and the first thing I am comparing for these two programs is the style of the program. And both of them follow the Orton-Gillingham approach or the OG approach to teaching both reading and spelling. But after having used both of these programs, they don't use this approach in the same way. They use it in similar ways. So the OG approach really focuses on a multi-sensory approach. So you're using all the different senses. So you're writing, you're looking, you're playing games. So you have definitely the tactile approach. And both are very strong in phonograms as well as they teach it very sequentially and logically. So that's a little bit about the style. Again, similar, not the same. So now moving on to a way in which they are different and they are very different in this way is Logic of English is a full language arts program and All About Reading is a phonics reading program. So within the Foundations A and B program, which is typically the kindergarten year, you get a lot of phonics, reading, spelling, and handwriting are the big ones that are focused on. Once you get into kind of the later part of B into C and D, you'll get into more comprehension, dictation, composition, and grammar are added once you get into the, some of those later programs, which are more like the first, second grade time frame. But All About Reading is strictly reading and phonics. Okay, so now for cost. So I looked up current prices. I'm not gonna include prices because you never know when you're gonna watch this video. But for a general rule, I would say that Logic of English is slightly more expensive than All About Reading. But the caveat here is that Logic of English includes more of your language arts programs. So if you were to add a spelling program and a handwriting program to All About Reading, it would kind of balance out to be about the same. And when I'm making these comparisons, I'm comparing kind of what you would need to do the whole program. So I'm talking all the different resources, so flashcards and tiles and readers and things like that. So I'm including all of that in both of those lump sums, not if you're just buying the teacher's guide and student guide kind of separately. It's kind of everything you would need to do the program. So with that comparison in mind, I'm gonna take you through what you need, some of the resources you would need to do each of these programs, and so you can get a feel for it as you're comparing the programs in your head. For Logic of English A and B, which is typically kindergarten year, you'll need both a teacher's manual and a workbook, and you can either get the manuscript or cursive version of the workbooks, and you need one of each. So level A, workbook, teacher's manual, B, workbook, teacher's manual. I'm gonna flip through the teacher's manual just a bit to show you. I've actually done a review video on Foundations A and B that I will link for a more in-depth look at this program. But as you can see, as I just flip to a random lesson, this is lesson 45, it gives you kind of objectives. You're gonna go through some phonogram practice, some handwriting, some phonemic awareness, some spelling practice, about five different words, more phonemic awareness, and then a reader. And then it'll go on to the review. So that's what the inside of the textbook looks like. 
And then as for the inside of the workbook, it's very colorful and lots of games. Here you see it's lesson 45 again, practicing handwriting, doing a bingo card, another bingo card, and then it moves on to the assessment or the review. So that's getting into a bit of the workbook and the teacher's manual. The other book type things that you will need for this program are these two books, Doodling Dragons and Whistling Whales. And they're wonderful books where they just have little rhymes that help the kids understand the different sounds. It's not such a big deal when you're talking the single sound phonograms, but when you get into the multiple sound ones like ah, uh, oh, ooh, you can see it really helps them out by giving them the different examples of when O oh says O oh, or ooh, as you can see. So these are great. You'll need those. And then foundations A, the readers are built into the student workbook. They'll build their own readers. And then here's foundations B's readers. And these are the other resources you will need to complete this program. So you'll need the basic phonogram cards, which you use all the time when practicing phonograms. Then the cursive tactile cards. So you're practicing, it's like sandpaper. So you can practice the feel of how the, the letters are written, have the tiles, which I ended up putting magnets on the back so we can put it over on our whiteboard that is on the wall. I really enjoyed that. My kids like that. You have the two different types of game cards. And I, since I got the cursive set, I have the cursive game cards as well as the book face and you play tons of card games with those. And then it also comes with a marker board, a small marker board, which we used a ton when we were working, say in the other room on the kitchen table, as opposed to in the school room where we had access to the marker board. So this right here is what you would need to start teaching your child to read if you're using the logic of English foundations program, specifically A and B kindergarten year. As for all about reading level one, here are some of the resources you will need. You will need the teacher's manual. You'll need the student manual. And I have broken the student manual up and put them into page protectors because that is one of the wonderful things about All About Reading is that the student manual does not have to be consumable. It's, you're not writing on it. You're doing a lot of different cutouts and matching the words and playing different games. So it's also very tactile, like Logic of English, but you can keep it all for future kids, which it's nice that I don't have to buy anything else to teach my other kids if I want to continue on. You just have to print things off like different progress reports, but those are found for free on their website. So this is the student workbook and all the games basically is what that consists of. And then to go through an example of the teacher's book, I'm going to go through two lessons because there's a bit of a pattern. So like for lesson 16, you're teaching some new letter sounds. So you always review your phonograms and your word cards. You teach the new sounds and then you go to the letter tiles and you start blending and sounding out with those new sounds, which is pretty easy. And then there's an activity sheet that you can find in your student manual and some new words for that lesson and a fluency sheet. That's a small depiction of what you would find in your student guide. And then they would practice the different words and that would be it for this lesson. And then the next lesson is the one where you're doing some more reading in the reader. And so it starts off very similar where you work on some phonograms and word cards. It's an activity sheet. There's a warm up for the reader, which I just grabbed the one we are currently working on. There are actually three readers that come with level one, but my kids like to look at them because we have the color edition and they really like that. And so I'm not quite sure where my other two are, but here's one example. So what you do is you would do that warm up sheet in the student guide and then you would read the story out of here. And this talks a bit about vocabulary and reading comprehension. You can assess if they're struggling so much just to sound it out that they don't understand the story at all, or if they're catching kind of the gist of the story. And then there's usually two stories. So there's another warm up sheet, some more vocab, some more questions as they read. So I have found that to be a common pattern in all about reading, especially level one, where you introduce new sounds, practice them, get new word cards, and then have the next lesson be where you do all your reading out of your reader. As for other things that come with this program that you will need, here are those phonogram cards and those word cards that are depicted in the teacher's guide that you use all the time. And you kind of move them through review and mastered and new cards and things like that. And I have mine standing on end because I'm using this program for two of my kiddos. And so I have to keep track of that a little bit, which isn't too bad. Um, and then here are the letter tiles. And so I put the magnetic squares on the back so I can put them on our whiteboard, similar to how I, I use the logic of English letter tiles. And so these are the resources you would need for all about reading. A lot of the activities again are found in the student workbook as where the logic of English has more like say games and you have the 
the game cards, this uses more activities that need to be cut out and kind of moved around in that way. So they're, they're both tactile, but they're just kind of a little different, if that makes sense. So that is what I wanted to show you for the resources. Let me flip back around and chat a bit about our experience. So I hope that was a helpful look into the different resources that are required for each program to help you kind of compare in your head if you're considering both of these programs. In my opinion, they're both wonderful programs and you could easily use both of those to successfully teach your child to read. As for our experience, so I started using Logic of English Foundations A when my son had just turned five years old. So he was kind of a new five-year-old and it took us about a year and a half to get through A and B which was great. He was learning all his phonograms. He loved it. He loved all the activities. He was really doing well with the program. I feel like we started this past fall into Foundation C and we were slowly chugging along, but it became progressively and progressively harder for him. It just kind of picked up the pace and the expectations for the kiddos, which is totally fine if your kid is tracking, but he, he wasn't. He was starting to struggle at that point, I was taking like three days to do a lesson. So we were going very slow and trying to make sure that he felt comfortable and not overwhelmed. Um, but the problem was, is he was lacking in a couple really important areas. One was fluency. He still needed to sound out his words and that really slowed him down. And then confidence. He didn't think he could read after the readers were getting too hard and it became such a struggle. I mean, we were supplementing with other readers like Bob Books and the Us Born set. So we had other things going on, but the readers that came with the program, he dreaded and he hated it. And it just became such a pushback. It took me a while to kind of catch on to the fact that this maybe wasn't working. One, because I just really loved the program. I just really believed in the program. And additionally, he was doing well in the other things. Like he liked the spelling. He did fine with the writing. He did fine with the comprehension questions. Things like that would kind of keep him going so he could move through the program pretty well, but anything that had to do with actually reading, he was struggling. And it just was too much and he just was becoming very defeated and just really down on himself. And so to me, that just wasn't okay. It just seems like he might need more time for it to click for him than to keep pushing through Foundation C just didn't seem like the smart answer. And so what I decided to do was go back to All About Reading because we used All About Reading pre-reading when he was four and we loved it. And so I knew I liked the All About Reading program. I also knew that it had that OG sort of style that used a lot of activities, was very focused on phonics. And so I knew it would probably be a pretty easy transition. We wouldn't be starting from square zero, like learning that he needs to put his fingers on the dots and follow the arrow, things like that. Like we had a program that he probably would handle fairly well and he did. He transitioned into level one really well. He flew through the first like 20 or so lessons, 25 lessons, no problem. It was just building his confidence. We were working on them, all the fluency sheets and that was some of the things I really liked is there was built in a lot more practice where he could just become more and more comfortable with all the words and all of the sounds and sounding things out and having the readers. It's just a huge confidence boost for him. Um, and we have reached a point where we have slowed down. We are now splitting a lesson into two days, which I think is more normal for All About Reading. And so for us, switching into All About Reading worked really well for what he needs in his current reading journey. And I also started my daughter on All About Reading Level 1. Just to keep things simple, I thought about going with Logic of English, and she might. I'm keeping it just in case that might be a better program for her, a better fit for her. But I see so many similarities, and I love both programs, that I think All About Reading will work really well for us just to keep the reading all by itself, not combined with a lot of other language arts subjects. And so that is our story. I hope this comparison was helpful to you. I feel like there's a lot of similarities and there definitely are notable differences that might draw you to one program versus the other. So I hope this helped highlight some of those and it was helpful to you. And please leave me a comment down below. What program do you use to teach your kids to read? Are you thinking about All About Reading? Are you thinking about Logic of English? What are your thoughts? Please share those. I would love to know that. And if you found this video helpful, please consider liking it, subscribing to the channel if you aren't already subscribed, and I will see you in the next homeschooling video. All right, have a wonderful day.